What's up guys, the April Patreon rewards are now available. Armageddon, Teferi Time Reveler, and Nekusar the Mind Razor are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description below. What is going on guys? Welcome uh, to our first gameplay video with Ikoria Lair of Behemoth included. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at Demir uh, Flash. Uh, this is a list that uh, kind of incorporated so uh, the previous list that we, we did a gameplay video on. If you did not see that list, please do check it out. Uh, and then this is incorporating and kind of adapting to the new set. So we've got a lot of new cards here. I'm going to go through some of the cards that we took out and some of the cards that we brought in. Uh, and then, of course, talk about just the deck list as a whole. First things first, I'm actually going to start with the lands. I trimmed it down by two. Uh, so initially we did have a full 24 land package, which is kind of the average, what you would normally expect. Uh, Castle Lockthwain, Castle Vantress were, were both still in, and then of course the 4 and 4 for Watery Grave and Temple of Deceit. I took one basic land out of each type, uh, dropped it down to 22 lands, which gave us two more slots. Now, I'll talk about why I did that in just a minute, uh, but I do think you can drop this list down to 22 and it still functioned very, very well. Now, We'll test that. Hopefully I'm right. I have not played with this iteration yet, so this is going to be a first for us, but I do want to kind of test that out and see where we go. Uh, in the one drop slot, the only changes here is we dropped two ops. So we we initially had four. We dropped it down to two. Uh, scry one, draw a card. Very efficient. Just a nice draw spell. And then we still have the full four spectral sailors. So flash flying one, one for one. And then for four, you can draw a card. So I actually really like this card. I think this is a solid one to keep in there. It does uh, kind of do the same thing that we see with a few other cards. So I do think this is one of those options where you could probably flex it down a little bit. Uh, and I'll, I'll say probably would be uh, a good idea to keep in the Gadwicks, which we did not. Uh, and in that case, maybe drop out a couple of these. That being said, I'm going to go with this list for now and we'll, we'll see what we do. Uh, still left in in the two drop slot, the Brine Boar Cutthroat. Uh, obviously just a really nice beater for this deck. It's going to get a lot of counters. So this is exactly the kind of card that you want to get out uh, very, very early. Flash in a bunch of stuff and then be able to deal tons of damage. So lots of utility here. Uh, one of our new cards, uh, Cunning Knight Bonder. So this is kind of the reason why I thought trimming down to 22 lands might actually be okay. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. It uh, has flash. It can be played with any of our lands, so it does not matter if we've got one blue, one black. It doesn't matter two blue, two black. It does not matter. We can play it with any of our land combinations, which means it's going to come in onto most often uh, very, very well and very, very efficiently. Uh, and then hopefully cheapen the rest of our deck. Uh, quite a lot of our deck. I mean, we top out at five mana. This brings it down to even four mana. Uh, and then say we get two of these out, we're down to three. So this really does cheapen a lot of the deck. My expectation is that if we can get this out quite early, uh, then the rest of the deck will run a lot smoother. So this is one of those kind of utility cards that I do think is going to do a lot of work. Uh, left in the counter spell with Quench. Uh, I think this is just a really efficient thing to have in uh, this deck. Uh, this deck really is looking to counter or play creatures or play creatures then counter. Uh, Quench is really, really good in the first iteration of that. Not so good in the backup, uh, but it is still a very efficient counter spell and I think one that we should keep in. Uh, Tyrant Scorn, I dipped that down to two. Again, we get kind of a repeated effect here later, uh, which, which I'll talk about, uh, but this does give you the bounce effect for any creature and then obviously a kill spell for certain ones. So still is a very efficient card. Definitely one against aggro decks that you're going to want. Um, Brazen Borrower, I, I had a hard time, but I did cut one Brazen Borrower. Uh, as much as I love this card, I do think we've got some other options here that I want to try. Uh, that might be an incorrect uh, assessment. We may need to keep the four. We may not need to play any. I don't know yet, but I do think that this is one of those cards where, you know, it just does so much. It's really hard to cut it entirely, uh, and so I really like this one. Uh, sea Dasher Octopus, one of the big new cards in Aquaria. Uh, one that I did bring in f a full playset of as well. It's a 2-2 two, two for 3 with flash. You can mutate it for only 1 in a blue. Uh, and when it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So you get to mutate onto something ideally uh, and then just start drawing cards. It's really, really good. Slither Wisp, another brand new card here. 3-2 three, for 3 with flash, of course. 
Uh, and then whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you get to draw a card and an opponent loses one life. So uh, not only does this give you a way to deal damage in a board stall position, uh, but it also gives you a way to draw cards out of a board stall position. Now, what I will say, I think this is definitely at its best in a board stall position or in a winning position. If you're in a losing position, I think it's okay uh, and definitely can help you draw out of it, but it is a bit slow. So we'll, we'll kind of test that out as we go. Uh, Sinister Sabotage, again, a remnant of the previous list. Uh, left three of these in. I think counter spells are very important in this deck. That's kind of the point is to be able to leave up counters and then flash in creatures if you don't need them. Uh, and so I'd like to keep as many of them in as possible. Did trim it down by one, but I still think obviously a very good include. There are new counters available at the three mana slot, so there might be some con consideration for swapping these out. Uh, and I did not go through every single card when I, I, I did this list. I knew specifically some of the cards that I wanted to put in. So very easily could have a better option for this, uh, but this is certainly something that I, I think we need. Uh, in the four drop slot with this beautiful new art, uh, we have the Dark Destroyer. This is obviously the Godzilla art for it, but uh, it is a 3-3 for two and two black. It has flash and flying. Uh, you can mutate for six. Uh, which is pretty expensive, I get that, but again, we're cheapening things down with that Night Bonder, so keep that in mind. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, though, destroy target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. So this gives us an, a, an on card or on a stick way of dealing with creatures and planeswalkers immediately. Uh, this is ki kind of why I was okay trimming down on the Tyrant Scorn, because we get to flash this in now instead. Uh, so it is a little bit more expensive, we have to keep that in mind, but I do think this is a very, very strong card. Uh, and then our last one here is Voracious Great Shark. So it's a 5-4 five, for 5. Uh, of course it has flash, and when it enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell. Uh, now obviously, 5 mana for a 5-4 with flash, you probably would be okay with that anyway, but... The fact that this can counter something is really, really great. Uh, I do think that this has a lot of utility, but it is quite expensive, so I don't think in this deck we want to run the full four. Uh, but I do think this is a cer certainly a very interesting card that I want to test out for this. Don't know how much that artifact is going to come into play, but definitely the creature side of it I think will be great. Uh, we did take out uh, the Lockmere Mirror Serpent uh, as well as um, the the big Sudden Storm guy, the 4-5. Uh, uh, Thrix, excuse me, I couldn't remember his name, uh, for specifically this, uh, in fact, and technically we did lower our curve by one. So I'm interested to see how this plays out. We're going to go ahead and jump into three games. Uh, very, very excited for this. I really hope you guys are too. Um, this is, uh, this is a really cool set. Uh, I'm really excited for it. I've already got an, a few deck ideas in mind. Uh, that I'm I'm really excited to record with. Please, by all means, if you have suggestions for deck lists, send them our way. Uh, if you've got a link to the deck li list, email it to us, comment down below, whatever you want to do to get it in our hands. We certainly would appreciate it. Uh, and certainly this is a very good keep. Uh, anything we can do to, to make sure that we're tailoring our content as best we can to the things that you guys want. Oh, look at that. Uh, is is absolutely perfect. So we, we certainly would appreciate it uh, if you guys do not mind. And this is the great thing about this deck. We get to leave up Quench. If we don't use Quench, we get to play Cunning Night Bonder, and then next turn we get to do even more. So I am going to go ahead and quench this here. Uh, what I've found against these red decks is you just drain them of resources as best you can, uh, and then you really start to take over the game uh, very, very quickly after that. Perfect target for Sinister Sabotage. Absolutely happy to uh, leave that. Huh. Do we want that? I actually think we need a land, so I'm actually going to ditch that. Um, that may be incorrect, but I think, yeah, perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and pass. Uh, let's see what they've got. Okay. Sounds good. Hope they attack in. So we get to flash this out. And block here. Oops. So perfect, we get to take out another creature. That's exactly what we wanted. They get their little 1-1. One -one. That's cool, not a problem. Let's go ahead and opt first. Do you think we'll keep that on top? And then we'll throw out the Spectral Sailor as well. So that way we can start pinging in the air 
and we have built-in card draw. So this is perfect. Um, man, very interesting card. Okay, let's go ahead and swing. And we will pass turn. Now there's a bit of an interesting spot because we are out of resources and we this is our only card draw right now. Um, hmm. -hmm. Can I? I can't. Let's do it over. Let's blow this up. So this not only negates essentially the shock, but it also gives us a flyer here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, now. We'll swing in with this. I'm gonna leave this up uh, and we will pass the turn. So now we can start to draw cards with this and then depending on what they do, of course, we have Sinister Sabotage left up. So I'm feeling pretty good about our position considering all they've got are a couple one ones here. Um, I'm gonna sabotage that. I just kind of don't want them to have anything uh, as much as possible. Hmm. I think we kind of just want our bigger options, so I'm actually going to pass on that. Uh, oh, perfect. Okay. I'm going to attack with both here. They are not going to block. Okay. And then we'll pass. Uh, let's get the pressure going. That's why I'm attacking with both. They can attack here. That's fine. Go ahead and bounce one of these. Very possible we could have just taken the hit there and uh, seen what they did afterwards, but it doesn't look like they're going to do much. And now we can start drawing some cards. Perfect. 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 Okay. So, of course, we're going to go ahead and swing in. So now not only do we have the creature card draw, but we of course have Castle Lockthwain as well. And this. Uh, so there's a lot of utility that we're getting out of this. That's pretty awesome. Uh, this is a 3-2. So I'm going to let them attack in. I'm going to play the Slither Wisp. Pass. And let's block. They may very well have a shock here. That's fine. Go ahead and draw a card. So they are going to get to deal with this Slither Wisp, which is not ideal, uh, but we certainly do have a, a more commanding board presence, so I'm not tremendously worried at this point. Go ahead and deal our five. And we're going to pass. Um, so here we have the Cutthroat, which feels good, uh, and we of course have our, our Flyer. For the record, yes. Okay, so this is just going to happen. That's fine. <laughs> okay. So we win, I believe. I mean, not much they can do at this point. Um,. I'm going to go ahead and do this here. <laughs> Just to be mean. That is kind of mean. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. All right. Let's go ahead and swing in. Perfect. Game one. Very, very well done with this Demir deck. Absolutely love how that played out. That was fantastic. Uh, in particular, we were able to devalue quite a lot of their spells. Uh, so that actually felt very, very good. Let's uh, let's give it two more games and let's see how we go. Um, we probably will also, uh, just as a heads up, we most likely will go ahead and do a second video with this deck, either tomorrow uh, or later today, depending on time. Uh, and so just a heads up, there probably will be more of this deck. This one is super, super sweet in my opinion. Um, and I do think this is a pretty good starting point for it. Excuse me. Now this is an interesting one because we don't have the double black for either of these two cards. So we're looking at only the Brineborn Cutthroat as our playables. We do have a Scry, uh, which does help. Uh, and we certainly do have our land drops. 
I think this is a bit of a sketchy keep. Um, if it is a keep at all, to be honest. I'm going to try it. Uh, this is a bit of a risky one, though. Very easily could be a bad keep. That helps. Let's actually put that on the bottom. We really need a black. Uh, and we've got some lands to get us where we need to be. So it's it's literally just a matter of getting a, uh, a swamp. Neutralize. That's one of the counters that I was talking about earlier. Okay. Uh, cunning Night Bonder actually helps pretty pretty well. Um. Mm hmm. Let's get this out there. This is a great one to get out early because obviously now all of our stuff is much cheaper. Oops. So that's what I need to, I, I'd like to understand. We can't do that at instant speed. Okay. Good to know. Certainly good to know. Cycling another neutralize. Okay. So there are two neutralizes down. I'm assuming they just don't have the second blue. Otherwise, they. I would assume they'd be going for that. Let's get that out there. And let's get another one. I mean, considering they're not doing a whole lot, I'd like to get as much out as possible. My assumption is they are a flash deck. Uh, very easily could be. Can we actually... So we can mutate this. So we can do it. That was interesting. Okay, I gotta better understand how that works. Uh, we want it over. So this is where they could very easily have Night Pack Ambusher. So I'm going to play it safe here. Now we do have the Brazen Borrower. Um, but I'm going to try and play it a little bit safe. Uh, just so we're not... Hmm. Okay. Sure. They got it. So in that instance, I made the wrong play. I certainly should have attacked with everything. Uh, I was not sure if they just would have a night pack ambusher, in which case, obviously, they just kind of go crazy on us, which I did not want to do. So let's get this out there. They are a flash deck. I mean, they're Simic flash, no doubt. Um, but they can't play this borrower. Still really worried about that ambusher, though. That's certainly our biggest worry. I'm gonna mutate this onto here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm mutating it onto here because if they destroy that one, then we still, if I'm not mistaken, uh, again, I've got a lot to learn about mutate, but if I'm not mistaken, we still get to keep that. So, all right, I am going to, this time I am gonna swing out. If they've got the night pack ambusher, we've got the brazen borrower. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then this just represents, obviously, quite a bit of damage. Okay. Yep, they do have it. That was what I was worried about. I'm going to bounce it. I'm going to do this before damage is dealt. That way they don't have the opportunity to block. Um, and then we can draw our card. Cool. Um, still short on land, unfortunately, uh, but if we can get something off of this opt, we might be in okay shape. Happy that that comes into play tapped. That just keeps them off of that double blue still. They've, they've, unfortunately, it looks like they've had a, a bit of a rough draw. Um, let's go ahead and opt. Get our counters. Uh, and this just makes it, oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. This just makes it very difficult for them to, to do too much. Now, they have the Night Pack Ambusher. We have Voracious Great Shark to counter it, um, which we're absolutely going to do.
and there we go. Another win. Awesome. Guys, this deck is killer. Okay, so one more game. Let's see if we can get another 3-0. Uh, if you didn't watch the first video with this deck, we did get a 3-0 that time around as well. Uh, now, I, I don't want to speak too soon, but I'm just saying we did get a 3-0 that game. Hopefully we can do it again. Great that we got some packs. We leveled up. I love it. Let's go ahead and jump in. <clears throat> also, if you haven't already, we did post literally just a little while ago uh, a pack opening on Arena uh, of 145 Aquaria Layer Behemoth packs. Uh, we we pre-ordered and then I went ahead and ordered a good bit more. That way we could do something like that this time around. Uh, and it was, I think, worth it. Um, Ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. I think we keep it because we have some card draw here, uh, and we've got the quench, so I'm going to try it. Quench is a really key card here. If we didn't have that, I don't think we would be going for this. Um, but we'll we'll see what the uh, opponent is on. With a hand like this... Okay, interesting. Let's get that down. a good one uh okay let's go ahead and attack him for one with something like this it makes me think steam vents makes me think something like jeskai fires or maybe even just a red blue variant uh could very easily be uh, in which case i'm expecting they're going to have some counters and things like that i don't think i counter that So here's my guess. They've got Is It Phoenix. That's what I'm thinking, at least. Uh, here, unfortunately, we do miss our land drop. Uh, so that's certainly a hit in the wrong direction. But here we get to quench that. Okay. Kind of helps. Past turn. It's not great. Um, unfortunately, missing land drops is really hurting us here. And maybe this is a testament. Maybe we shouldn't have gone down to 22. Um, I don't really think we need a ton of lands, though. I, I think this might be more of the anomaly uh, than the other way around. Um, certainly more testing will show. And so hopefully uh, that's what we'll be able to do here. Um, but I certainly got another ox. Okay. So they can't escape this this turn. They've got a lot of cards in their graveyard too. Ox is a very cool card. I like that quite a lot. Kind of hoping they just draw more cards here. Looks like that's the plan. If I get this out, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. I know I can opt, so I, I understand that I'm the one not opting on purpose. I'm trying to get as much pressure out as possible. I mean, Temple is a land. It's not the best land, for sure. Um, but it does count. Perfect. We do make them think we have a quench. We represent it. Here, I'm really just hoping they play the Ox. Um, that's 100% fine, because then we've got this to next turn, since we've got the Swamp. Um, we know we've got it. Looks like that might be what's happening to you. Yeah, I think it is. They're leaving up their two red, which is smart. I mean, that lets them do it, but we do have the, the Dark Destroyer. I love this art, by the way. It's so cool. Really? Okay. Are they just looking for, like, did they hit their land drop this turn? If not, then they could just be doing that. If not, though, they kind of just lose. I'm leaving that on top. We already knew it was there, obviously, but. Okay, so they get the Phoenix. But they can't swing in with it. And here. 
Oh, so we can't... We can't mutate it. Okay, so they do get another turn here. Swing it in with both because they literally have to block this. I wish we could mutate it. Yeah, unfortunately we can't. Okay, so the downside to this, this does not just trigger when it comes into play. It has to be when it mutates. So there is a downside to it. Um, and that's something we're, we're obviously learning about. That's fine. Counter. Okay. I kind of think we keep that on top. So they've got two mana left. Um, they've gone through quite a bit of their deck, I will say. We're seeing the power level of this cutthroat, though. They, I mean, they literally have to do something about this every time uh, in terms of blocking it. Uh, and so it's actually really nice that, you know, so they get this. Escapes with a 1-1 counter on it. So it is a 5-3. Does kind of make us rethink exactly what we want to do. Get to swing in with this regardless. I'm going to end my turn here. So let's see what they are going to do. This is a very cool deck, though. Um, I know somebody actually posted recently uh, asking for deck list submissions on Instagram. Uh, and a lot of people were saying, make Is It Phoenix work. Maybe this is the way we can. This is a pretty cool deck. I, I mean, I certainly like it a lot. I'm going to counter this. Gets us into attacking range with this as well. Actually, don't think we want that. We kind of either want to land or like a one drop. Sure. So they can two for one. Oh, that is a land. Uh, let's see. So we can't mutate quite yet. Could have attacked with this, but I don't really think we need to. I'm going to end my turn. We'll see what they want to do here. It's really interesting. This is a cool deck, though. Uh, both of these decks are really, really cool. I like these a lot. Okay. This seems a bit uh, slow, is the only thing that I will say. I mean, this is certainly a great include, and this isn't even a new card, really. This is just a really cool card. Um, but I don't think it's enough. Sure. So this Slither Wisp, we're seeing at this point, we're not in like a board stall necessarily, uh, but we're in a point now where like, um, we need a way to kind of break through these last two points of damage because certainly they can just block this or this. Um, what's great about it is Slither Wisp kind of inherently gives us that option. Um, so here, we'll see what they do. I, I doubt they're gonna attack, yeah. So let's get Slither Wisp out there, get a counter here. And now anytime we play any any flash creature on their turn, they're going to take one, uh, which just gives us the option of, of pinging away, essentially. I am going to attack with this here. Um, certainly they can, they can try and block in a meaningful way, and that's fine. They can kind of double up here. Uh, I don't care too much, <laughs> to be to be brutally honest. Uh, at this point, we're not on that plan anymore. We're just trying to clear the way. Uh, and so I'm going to pass here. Uh, we can Great Shark uh, encounter something, you know, a creature that they may be able to, to play here, uh, which certainly may just be another Ox. 
uh, in which case we ping them for one and then they literally have to find a way to, to deal with our board that turn. Um, and if they don't, which I, I highly expect they will not be able to, uh, then we're in a much, much better place. Now, Slither Wisp we can actually double up on if we really wanted to, but I don't think that increases our clock at all. So I'm not too worried about that. Now, this is certainly going to be a big hit here, but I don't think they can just kill us this turn which is a very important and certainly you know we can just always block here that being said this is a very cool list i'd be interested in trying this um is it phoenix is always a has always been a very cool deck since it's been out um but in standard at least uh at least this standard environment it's not been the best uh it's not been at its best and so it's really really cool to see someone um really doing the most so they've got two cards left in their graveyard let's do this draw a card they lose a life and then we counter the ox that feels very good so now they're in a position with only two mana left to save themselves one damage which i just don't think they can do that's very good very good indeed This does not have lifelink. I'm just double checking. <laughs> so no blocks. That's fine. Well, that's quite good for us, actually. Um, okay, so we can just mutate this. So I'm just trying to make sure we could win this turn, right? destroy that and we I believe we got it awesome okay three and0 oh again <laughs> with this flash Demir deck uh, this time hey and we ranked up to tier three uh, this time with a Coria layer of behemoth cards in it amazing seriously an amazing deck i am so excited to play this one again hopefully you guys are excited to see it thank you for watching please make sure to go watch our pack opening uh will and i also just released as of like wednesday uh our jdc uh jank deck competition series uh where we really just get to to play around with some silly stuff i really encourage you to check that out it's going to be really fun lots of akoria cards that we get to play with now so i'm really excited about that as well uh, and hopefully, as always, if you enjoyed it, please make sure like, comment, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. But guys, I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Enjoy the new set. Uh, and we will be back very, very soon with some more gameplay. See you later, guys.